Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great start to your week. Welcome back to Monday Money Messages from the Mat. Today we are on Retirement Account Options Series Part 2, where I will be discussing the Roth IRA. Now if you remember from last week where I discussed the traditional IRA, an IRA stands for an Individual Retirement Account. And a Roth IRA is another retirement account savings vehicle that may have some tax advantages for you. So let's get started. There are contribution limits to a Roth IRA just like there are for a traditional IRA. For 2019, if you are under the age of 50, you can contribute up to $6,000 into a Roth IRA. If you are 50 or older, you can contribute up to $7,000 this year. Now, when you set up the account, you can do this in lump sums or you can contribute on a monthly basis. Contribution deadlines. You can contribute to a Roth IRA up until the tax deadline of the following year for the previous year. For example, this year's tax deadline, like most years, is April 15th. So you can make contributions into a Roth IRA up until April 15th of 2019 for the tax year 2018. You must have earned income in order to be able to contribute to a Roth IRA. If you do not have earned income, but your spouse does, he or she can contribute into a Roth on your behalf. Now let's talk about the way contributions, earnings, and withdrawals are taxed with a Roth IRA. Contributions are made with after-tax dollars. You will not receive a tax deduction now when contributing to a Roth IRA. Earnings grow tax deferred, meaning that as the account grows, you will not pay taxes on the earnings as you go along. And as long as certain guidelines are met, withdrawals from Roth IRAs will come out federally tax free. One thing you're going to want to be aware of is that there are income limits for contributions into a Roth IRA meaning that you can only earn up to a certain amount in order to be able to contribute. So make sure you talk to your tax advisor and your financial planner to make sure that you fall within those income limits. An important difference between a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA is that you don't have to stop contributing to a Roth at age 70 and a half, and you don't have to take mandatory distributions either. So as long as you have earned income, you can keep on contributing to a Roth IRA. Last but not least, something very important, just like with the traditional IRA, with the Roth IRA, you are also going to want to avoid early withdrawals. So make sure you talk to your tax advisor or your financial planner if you take a withdrawal from a Roth IRA before retirement to make sure that you will not incur additional taxes and penalties. So there you go, the basics of the Roth IRA. If you're interested in reviewing last week's episode where I talked about the traditional IRA, go ahead and visit the website at www.financial-yogi.com where you can see the video and the blog from last week. And don't forget to tune in next week where I'll be discussing the SEP IRA another retirement account option for self-employed individuals. You won't want to miss it. So have a great week, everyone. Don't hesitate to contact me if you have any retirement account option questions. Happy savings. See you next Monday.